Now we'll look at exploring chord properties. So let's just review. A chord is a line segment with both endpoints on the circle. So again, if we take our line segment, go from one end to the other, we have a chord. A perpendicular bisector is a line or a line segment that passes through the midpoint of a line segment at a 90 degree angle. So if we were to take a ruler and measure the distance of MN and determine the middle, and let's say that the middle is right here, whoops, and we'll call this point, point P, being the center, so that means that MP is equal to the length of PN. So we can say segment MP is equal to segment PN. At this point I have bisected the line, but let's make a perpendicular bisector. And so if we are able to draw a line extending from the center point P, ensuring that it is perpendicular to segment MN. And let's call this point R. I have now created a perpendicular bisector. So RP is perpendicular, so it's an upside down capital T. RP is perpendicular to MN. And since MP is equal to PN, then we could also say that RP is a perpendicular bisector of segment MN. So how does that apply to our circles? Well, if we took our chord right here, and I'll name those ends A, B, and we were to draw a perpendicular from the center of the circle to the chord, as soon as I have this segment be perpendicular, and that's not hitting C, so let's try that once again. So if we start from C, it's just not cooperating. So let's undo and we'll try again. I think we'll need to go freehand now. So let's say that if I draw a line from C to the chord, and I know that this line is perpendicular, if this is perpendicular, what automatically happens is that I have also bisected a, B. And so that point, let's call that D. We've created a right angle or two right angles. So angle C, D, A is a right angle and C, D, B is a right angle and A, D is equal to D, B and C, D is the perpendicular bisector for A, B. If we look at this example now in Geometer Sketchpad, once again I have my circle and we have chord A, B, center O, and C is the midpoint of A, B, and C, O happens to meet A, B at a right angle, and we can see that because measure of angle O, C, B is 90 degrees. And we can also see that the measure of AC is equal to the measure of BC, and that's indicated here. So if I grab point B and I move that around the circle, take a look at the numbers. No matter where that chord is, that angle continues to be perpendicular, and it continues to be a perpendicular bisector. We can now use our knowledge of chord properties to solve a couple of different problems. So let's just review. So the chord property that we looked at was basically suggesting that if we bisect a chord at a perpendicular angle, it will automatically go through the center of the circle. Or 
If you draw a perpendicular from the center of a circle to a chord, it automatically bisects or divides that chord in half. So, first problem we can look at is if we wanted to find the center of a circle using chord properties. Well, what we can do then is start by drawing a chord. If we then use a ruler, or perhaps we can fold the circle in half if we are able to cut it out and match point over point to determine where that middle of that chord is, that center point. And so if that is the center and we draw a perpendicular to that, so we have a perpendicular bisector of this chord what do we know is we know that the center lies somewhere along this bisector. But in order to figure out exactly where that point lies, let's draw a second chord somewhere on the circle. And once again, we can either fold or measure and determine where the center oops, center of that line is that would bisect that chord and then construct a perpendicular bisector that divides our chord into two and once again we know that the center lies somewhere along that blue perpendicular bisector and thus that intersection will be our center C. Another possibility of how we can apply our chord properties to solve a problem is to find a missing link. So possibilities might include using the radius, in this case being C, D. The chord length, or half the bisected chord, so the full chord length being of course A, B. Or the distance between the chord and the center. So the chord to the center would be length C, E. Or the chord and the circle being E, D. So let's say, for example, that we have a situation where I've told you the length of the chord is A, B being 8 centimeters and let's also provide you with the distance between the center C and the chord. So CE is 2 centimeters and I want you to find the radius. Well, let's start by indicating those values on our diagram. So if AB is 8 centimeters, and I know that the chord has been bisected by this perpendicular bisector, also a radius CD, then if AB is 8 centimeters, then EB must be 4 centimeters. CE given to us is 2 centimeters. So if I want to find the radius, what I should notice is that if I was to join center C to point B, it not only represents the radius, but it also represents the hypotenuse of right triangle CEB. Thus, we can apply Pythagorean theorem to solve for the radius length BC. So let's take a look. If Pythagorean theorem states that A squared plus B squared equals c squared, then 2 squared plus 4 squared is c squared, 4 plus 16 is c squared, so that tells us that c squared is equal to 20. To determine c, we know that we need to take the square root of c, and thus the square root of 20 and we know that root of 20 is an irrational number, thereby giving us a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal. And so we'll round that to the nearest tenth, giving us then approximately four and a half centimeters. Thus we know that the radius
is approximately four and a half centimeters in length. So the radius represented by BC, but also remember the radius is represented by CD. And we can therefore also figure out that DE would be equal to the radius, or CD, minus CE. So the radius CD being four and a half centimeters minus the distance between the center to the cord, two centimeters, so DE would then measure two and a half centimeters. Good. Looks like you're ready to begin your homework, and that would be topic two. So take a look at pages 389 to 393, numbers 2, 4, 6 through 8, 10 through 13, and 16 through 18. If you need additional examples, have a look at your textbook, and of course there are plenty provided. You may also talk to Ms. Elston, Mrs. Adam, or Ms. Bertram for assistance.